Hello, everyone, and welcome to my channel. This is Nicolin, and you are here with me at Underneath Her Skin. Today, I have a very, very, very special person here with me today. My principal, Principal Butte. Thank you so much, dynamic lady, for being here today at Underneath Her Skin. It's such an honor to have you here. I am so happy. Um, so thank you for coming. Guys, if you are new to my channel, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel so that you will not miss another video here at Underneath Her Skin. We definitely talk to different people about the things that they go through in silence, Ooh. our silent cries, and just things that we like to share with others. So join the community, like, and subscribe so you will not miss another video. Let's get into it. So yes. Principal Pew, like I said, thank you so much for joining me here today. Please go ahead and tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm like, I'm like probably like your biggest stand right now. Um, just because I know your journey and I, you. I've been privileged both personally and professionally to um, be alongside you in this journey. So I'm like so super duper psyched to see this and um, so, and thank you for having me. And um, absolutely, yeah. So my name is Samantha Pugh. I am currently the chief academic officer and principal, proud, proud principal of Merrick Academy Queens Public Charter School. Uh, I am. I currently live in Long Island. Uh, something I thought I would never do because I'm a <laughs> like city girl from the bone. <laughs> That's right. Long Island. Not literally, yes. but close. <laughs> Um, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. Um, I've been born and bred in Brooklyn, New York. I am I am a first generation college graduate. Yay! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I um, I'm a graduate of the illustrious Hampton University. So HBCU, nice. shout out to HBCUs. Um, I'm 40. I'm going to be 45, uh, which is really <laughs> interesting because. My birth certificate and driver's license says 45, but I really feel like I'm 30. Um, I feel young at heart, maybe even 25, but my knees, oh, say, wow. <laughs> my knees say something different. Oh, okay. Your knees are 40. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, and I'm just like really excited to be here and tell my story. I've, I have a, from what people say, I have a very interesting life. Um, I do. I think I do. Um, yeah. I have a very blessed life, but it's been an exciting journey and I'm proud of where I am right now because of people like you got you and a lot of people that I come in contact with that keep me going every day. So awesome. that's a little bit about me. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much for that. Now I know that today, Principal Pew, you are a principal, so you are in a leadership role. And mm -hmm. today we're here to talk about courageous leadership. You know, leadership fueled by fire. Like, what is it that drives you to, you know, be able to lead at the capacity that you're able to lead? So I want, as we're doing this series, this is a three-part series, and as we're doing this, I would like for you to share with our viewers, what does that really mean for you as a leader? So this is something that, like, was born to me. I've been, like, trying to coin and figure out a name for this feeling that I've been feeling um, all my life, but particularly it's been highlighted over the last three or so years. Um, and it's courageous. So there's this book out there that many leader, leaders are given, school leaders are given, it's, it's called Courageous Leadership. And it's like the guide on how to lead uh, school culture and how to lead. And I'm just like, all of that is good, but no one tells you, right? So like, that's the manual. Mm -hmm. But no one really tells you what it means to be a Black Mm -hmm. woman leader and that leads communities that um that are similar to Merrick's no yeah. one tells you how to do that so the book the textbook piece of it isn't enough yeah no one people don't talk enough about the other part of it and then I've been thinking about this idea that, like I like I have a big principal tribe shout out to OSG Black Obsidian all of my um nice my, my tribe and I realize a lot of our stories as to why we're leaders is because we just tired of what's happening, either tired of what happened to us as students, mm -hmm. um, tired of seeing what's happening to our kids when people just follow the textbook yeah. and not really um, attach the love 
that we have. So it's this idea that our courage to fight for our kids has comes out of rage. Um, so, so it's that play on core and then it's rage in parentheses, courageous leadership and what it means to be black in, in, in leadership and particularly in school leadership. So forged by fire. Um, I'm here not necessarily because I had great experiences in school, both as a student, a teacher and a leader, because, but I'm here because I wanna uh, clear a different path for kids that look, look, look mm -hmm. like me and came up like me. Mm -hmm. And um, far too long, we've done a disservice to them. So I, I'm like the kid that figures out how to do something because somebody told me I couldn't do it. Oh, wow. and, um, and that's where this is coming from. So awesome. that's courageous leadership. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. I like the fact that you shared that based on your experiences as a child, mm -hmm. you were able to use that and say, well, you know what? I didn't have this, or I wished this was done this way to when I was going and growing up and going to school or maybe college or just in your community. So I love the fact that you're able to look back at your past and say, these are some gaps that I saw. And as I'm growing up, I want to be able, and you are, to mm -hmm. fill some of those gaps. So I want you to share with me because you talked about the manual. And a lot of times we have a lot of manuals, but we know that it takes more than a manual, right? And I will tell you this, my husband always say to me that you can, you can always have a degree and everything, but you, if you don't have the, the heart, the H-E-A-R-T for mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. it's not going to be, you know, um, successful. You right. know, it's just going to be like another job. So can you share with us, what are some things or challenges that you have taken, as you mentioned, from your past to where you are now that is helping you to, you know, continue to be that courageous leadership that you are right now. So it's, thank you for sharing that because he, he's right. He's spot on. I keep reading this quote. I read it. I wish I could take credit for it, but I can't. Um, I own my, I, I don't, I rent my title. I own mm. my character. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. I rent my title. I own my character. Right. So like my work isn't defined by my title. I care less. They call me CAO, principal, mm -hmm. whatever. I'm a leader, right? Mm -hmm. So like, it even drives me crazy when my staff calls us admin. I'm like, right. Don't even me, right? So, but I get, I get why. Yeah. But it's like, nah, I'm a leader because I'm attached to the work. I'm not attached to the title. So like, right. when the work isn't fulfilling, then the title means nothing. Right. So, um, I think that's been for that's because I love what I do. Like I love, <laughs> I love people. Mm -hmm. I love people. I love figuring out what makes them work. Uh, what, and I love people who love people. And, yes. um, so my purpose, you know, and it goes back to, so a lot of this has been coming, a coming of self around purpose. And my purpose is to bring the people together and set the conditions so that they can be successful by to love on one another and make change. So that's how I look at my job, right? Like mm -hmm. my job is to create the conditions so and bring the people together and keep them inspired in that work. And that hasn't always been it, right? Like I remember because the world tells you to chase after you smart, right? You, if you're smart, you go to a good school, you go to right. a good school, you go to a good college and you get a good Kinda job. Lined up. Right, exactly. And you make a lot of money, right? And my thing, I've never been that, I've never been that kid. I've never been that adult. Um, so I think that's come from me feeling really empowered by the people and understanding what love could do for you. Um, mm -hmm. I had a very, I had a great upbringing, but I had a challenging upbringing. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that's remained constant in my life, I was just looking at a picture um, of my eighth grade graduation. And then my, when I got my second master's, my graduation, the same two people who were in that eighth grade graduation picture are the same two oh, people wow. Wow. who were in that picture. So, um, I, uh, I believe in family. I believe in tribe um, because my, my life when I was in, in the 80s and 90s was like falling apart. Drugs have ravaged my family. Mm -hmm. um, and when drugs ravage your family, my mother was probably one of the few. She worked all of the time because she felt like that was her one job was to make sure that I was able to eat and go to school. Mm -hmm. But I was no one was helping me figure out all the other stuff. And other I was stuff. a young kid mm -hmm. trying to figure it all out. 
But the one thing that remained constant through it all is the people that paved the way and blocked and tackled so that I could be successful. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, and that is how, cause I don't need you to like, I didn't need them to teach me how to be smart. Right. They right, did right. all of those things. My family really poured into me as a young person. So they saw, I guess they saw something in me. They always say, they always say that. So, um, and even through the dysfunction, they were still able to love on me and clear the way mm-hmm. for me. successful. Mm-hmm. And that's always been a lesson in life for me is to build my tribe, love on my tribe, clear the way, because people are going to be great if you give them the conditions to do so. Absolutely. And um, so that's how my upbringing has had me become that type of leader to have that type of leadership style and believe in that deeply. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. And I, I like the fact that you said you believe a lot in tribe and you believe a lot in you just just coming together because I see that at Merrick where we ser- sincerely operate as a community. And I think that's definitely a part of your vision and how you want this, to see the school flourish, especially in a time like this where it's it's not the norm, you know, so we had to shift hats and do things differently. But I love the fact that we were able to just come together and formulate that community. And I'm pretty sure that was part of your vision and how you are being our leader and us being able to fulfill that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, my, like people always ask me what makes you proud about Merrick? And I'm like, who my people are to each other that hands down. And I mean, and listen, we had double digit improvement over two years. We got, I mean, our kids are blowing it out of the water and I'm certainly proud of that, Absolutely. but I'm really proud of the community that mm-hmm. we are, you mm-hmm. know? Um, Me too. And, and I like, th- and who we are to each other. Mo- a lot of people don't know, but I was in a major car accident mm-hmm. um, two months ago mm-hmm. and uh, almost three, gosh, mm-hmm. January 7th, I was in a major car accident. And I remember the moment where I was like, you know what, God just take care of my people. I never asked him to take care of wow. me. If something so happens, he just take care of my people. Mm-hmm. And how ironic when I'm in this crisis and in this uh, situation, uh, yeah, this t- sort of accident where a truck hit me mm. and all I could think about was taking care of my people because I believe you take care of the people, they're going to take care of you. Absolutely. And when I looked up, it was one of our staff members who was on the highway who was able to help me. Oh, wow. Um, in that accident. So I always tell people, I'm, I, I tell Mary, y'all are mine, good, mm-hmm. or, good or bad, because <laughs> God has only told me that they, y'all are. So yeah. there ain't no stopping me from yeah. making sure that that works. So I take that seriously. So like that reignited my purpose. I was like, what are the chances of one of my teachers being on the highway while I'm in an accident? And then just the love that came from Merrick when I was at home, I was, everybody was like, what do you need? And I was just like, I just need food and how y'all took care of me. Like y'all took care of me. I'm feeling choked up now because I, and I've, I'm so grateful for that. Yes. Um, I am like, I, there's no words that I could ever because, and then I also am proud of that because I feel like I had a hand in it. I had mm-hmm. a hand in having people feel that way. And it's not just for me, right? It's for everyone. Absolutely. Um, and how we gather around our kids when our kids need us. So we don't always get it right. Mm-hmm. We don't always agree on everything. But I know at the end of the day, we're going to get the work done because yes. we love what we do and we love on each other. Absolutely. And that's what family is about. That's what community is about. The coming yeah. together when, when someone is not well, like coming together when we, we may lose someone in our family, in our community. And that's what brings us together. And that's what makes us, you know, a unit and a, and a cohesive unit and um, one that's functionally operating. So I love that, you know, you are definitely able to experience that. Mm-hmm. And I remember when we got the news and we were like, oh my gosh. And well, I, I saw those emails as well. Everybody coming together, figuring out what we're going to do. We're, we're definitely happy to know that you are here uh-huh. and you are doing so much better. Yes. You know, so we give God thanks for, you know, you're still recovering, right? Yep. Because I, I didn't, and you know, they'll tell you, I didn't complain. And you know what? Mm-hmm. I said, I'm not going to complain because he just reassured me that I'm supposed to be here for something because mm-hmm. I could have easily you know, even when I got to the hospital, they were like, people don't come out these type of, I haven't, I haven't seen oh. a in my car yet. Mm-hmm. So 
but from what I understand, it's pretty bad. Um, yeah. So, so it's like I'm repurposed. I'm so like repurposed. So I don't yeah. have. Time. I feel choked up because of the love, but not because okay. of what happened to me. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, it happened for me. It didn't happen. Yes. To me. It happened yes. for me. And you so, have that support. You definitely yeah. do have that support. Yeah. Absolutely. So thank you so much for sharing that story with us. One more thing that I would like for you to share. I know yeah, that you met my tears. You got me out here with the. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> no problem. Go ahead. I I, I completely understand. You know, I, I just, that's right, my affection, you know, to <laughs> to our staff and to, to you as our principal. We're definitely happy that you're well and you're safe. Um, so definitely thank God for that. Um, in thinking about your you mentioned something about, you know, when you were raised, your mom made sure that you had certain particulars in place, but there were certain things maybe you know the community and stuff like that that you weren't taught how to to basically maneuver or how to go through even though you did go through it right for young girls right now um who are like you who may be in the position that you were in what advice would you be able to give to them now maybe some things that you've gone through that have helped you even when you felt like I don't even know what's going to happen. What advice can you give to the generation now who's coming up knowing that this was where I started, but this is where I am now? What advice can you give to them? So I'm a prime example um, of it takes a village. So if you can't get it, I, I realized really early that there was some things I could get from my parents and some things that I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And um, I was able to seek out help from other adults. So I always tell kids, like, even if your parents, please don't blame your parents for being who they are. They don't, they don't know anybody else but to be. And, but, you know, God puts other people in our lives to fill the gap. Absolutely. And um, so seek that. Yes. Um, seek that. Uh, seek that out. Seek that out in teachers. Seek that out in counselors. Seek that out in other adults. Um, and don't be afraid to ask for help because you 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 speak life into yourself every day so you could you could speak life or death right so it's about mm -hmm. asking for help or not um because that was helpful to me and that's why i'm so like driven about school because th though school failed me it also saved me there were mm -hmm. people who did and there were teachers who did like invest in me and i had that outlet you know and i had those i still have them now <laughs> mm -hmm. it's still in my life i won't let yeah. them go Mm -hmm. um, so that's why it's important to me to have schools where we nurture relationships with kids because I know yeah. the difference that it can make and it, mm -hmm. it can be outside of academics. Mm -hmm. um, so I always say reach out. Um, I also would say um, you have, a, have, some, have, have a routine of something that you tie yourself to. Um, so like for me, I always found a way, music was my thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, music was my thing and I found that escape yes. through music mm -hmm. and um, which allowed me to paint stories in my in my head about mm -hmm. what I want to see um, yes. so that was my thing and that's how I used that genre and that's why I'm such a hip-hop maniac now and I will defend it to the end because I know what it did for me yes because that that was my thing but yeah find your tribe find your thing don't be afraid to ask mm -hmm. um, and just sharpen your tool. I, I was just telling a friend of mine today, you don't have to try to master everything. All you need is that one thing. Absolutely. That one thing. So that, I think those are the things that helped me persevere through it. Or I always had a vision for my life. I always, no matter what, knew that I was destined for something else. And um, I just always felt that. I don't know. Like, I don't, I never felt like I was, I don't want to say that I felt like I was different, but I never mm -hmm. felt like I was the same as everyone else. Okay. Um, and I think that has to do a lot with my family making me feel like I was a superstar mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. from young. Pouring um, into you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like pouring into me. So mm -hmm. I just always felt like there was more and I still feel like there's more. Somebody told me, you, you, you're a little too ambitious. And I'm like, oh, no. Wow. I feel like I still haven't fulfilled everything, but mm -hmm. yeah, start tapping into those things that drive you and passion mm -hmm. um, and keep those and hold those close to your heart. 
Absolutely. Definitely. Thank you so much for that. And I know that, you know, a lot of you mentioned music and that's one of the main things I know that that captivates people and it pulls mm -hmm. them in and it definitely is very therapeutic. So I'm glad that you're able to mention that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the last question that I have for you, is there one thing as a leader, right? <laughs> I don't know if you can just think of one thing, but okay. as a leader that you can say has really, um, shaped who you are today just one thing and in the way in which you lead and then one thing that you may want to say i need to work on that as a leader because i believe even as leaders transparency is amazing right oh, absolutely. and being able to go back and say you know what i could have done that a little differently so mm -hmm. as one thing that you say is you you go to as yeah. a leader and one thing that you can say i yeah. I, I can work on that Right. Um, I think my go-to is, um, my go-to is to get the people excited about whatever it is that we're about to do, right? Okay. Like whatever it is. And even when I'm like, this is probably the most boring thing, but you got to get people excited and buy into yeah. it. Right. So like, I feel like that's my strength. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is that like, when I'm passionate about something, I'm like relentless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So I'm like, and and that that could be jarring to people sometimes. They sometimes people are like slow down, mm -hmm. slow down, son. You're mm -hmm. killing them, right? So, yeah. um, I think so. I always have to take a step back and realize that everyone isn't in my mind and can't see it, and I have got to make it plain for people, but also at a pace that they can handle. Yes, absolutely. So that's, that's, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the thing because I'm. I think everybody's on a thousand, and everybody's not on a thousand. So, so maybe on ten. Maybe on 10. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe on 10 while you're at a thousand. But I understand what you're saying. I mean, but when you have a vision, it's hard for others to see sometimes what that is, you know, yeah. you to lay it out sometimes. And even with laying it out, they still, they may still not get it because that vision is simply yours. Exactly. You so you know how hard you have to work at it. You know how fast you got to go at it just so that it can come to fruition. So I, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. So I just, you know, and I could be a little saucy sometimes. I know you only asked for one, this but I'm. <laughs> you can give us more. I'm a little saucy. And the reason why I'm so saucy is because like the way that I go at this work is so deep in my soul. Mm -hmm. Right. And I realize That's that everybody passion. does have it it's so deep so i don't really have sometimes i don't have the patience patience mm -hmm. or um like now we gotta get this done we gotta get this done we gotta get this done and then i feel sometimes like the only way that i could get people to either do it is be like super duper excited or like super saucy so okay. therapy has been helping me figure out the middle <laughs> therapy. therapy yes doing wonders awesome yes. So your one thing that you say, I don't know if you mentioned it in that, but the one thing that you need to work on, I know you said patience. So I don't know if you meant that was that it, that was it. Yes. Like, okay. <laughs> it was okay. a lot in that, but patience was the main. Oh, okay. Okay. No problem. Well, thank you so much, Principal Pew, for joining thank me you. here today at Underneath Her Skin, talking about courageous leadership and how it is fueled by fire. You definitely talked about your past and how that drove you and helped you and carved you into who you are today. And we are happy, happy, happy that you were able to grace us today with your presence. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you are more than welcome. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you. And please join us for part two and part three of this three-part series of being a courageous leader. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.